Hey everyone, welcome to VisionRecordingStudios.com. On today's show, we have a product review of the Rivera Rock Crusher Recording, which is a piece of gear that will allow you to record your high gain tube amps at a low, reasonable, quiet bedroom type volume levels. So let's take a look. Hi guys, welcome back to VisionRecordingStudios.com. On today's show, we're going to talk about the Rivera Rock Crusher Recording. What this unit is, it's a piece of gear that allows you to record your high gain tube amps, such as this uh, Fender 5153, at a low volume level and still get that great cranked up tube amp type of a sound that we all desire. So let's take a look at this unit. Now this unit is made by Rivera. Again, it's called the Rock Crusher Recording. It's really two units in one. It is on the left hand side here, a power attenuator or a hot plate, but they call it a power attenuator. And on the right side is a speaker emulator. So let's talk about right now the power attenuation section of this unit, how it works, take you through the functions and show you what it does. So trying to, to kind of give you kind of a setup of what we got going on here. We have the Fender 5153, the 50 watt head version. Um, we have the gain set at about 10 o'clock the bass, the mid, and the high set at 12 o'clock, and the master volume set at about 11 o'clock. With a 412 cabinet out in the isolation room with a, a set of uh, Celestian 25 watt greenbacks, mic'd up with a Shure SM57, which is just off to the right side of the dust cap. Pretty standard guitar miking procedures. Um, out in the other room, um, and this is a standard uh, Gibson Les Paul standard stock pickups. There are no, no effects. All the sound samples you're going to hear today are completely dry. Just a little touch of reverb with a reverb pedal, um, but no compression, no other further equalization except what's coming out of the cabinet, what's coming out of the amp and out of the rock crusher here. Um, so you can be assured of that. Nothing modded on the guitar. Everything is pretty straight, pretty dry, pretty standard setup. Okay, so on the attenuator section, what we have here is we have... Um, a set of a series of switches and dials here and what this allows you to do is this is patched in between the guitar head and the speaker cabinet and what it does it allows you to control the the output level of the amp volume wise to the speaker cabinet so when we're in bypass mode all we're doing is we're hearing however head however loud this head is cranked up through that cabinet and right now if you take a listen to this <laughs> If you were standing in that other room with that speaker cabinet, it would be ear splitting loud, extremely loud. Something that you can't record in your home studio, especially late at night or early in the morning. Or if you have your kids and the rest of your family throughout the house, they would hear that guitar cabinet without a question. Um, but it has to be cranked up this loud in order to get that nice tube, uh, power tubes to be driven to get that nice, you know, natural gain that you get out of the tube head. That's one of the problems with recording high gain tube heads is you have to crank them up to get them to sound good even with a master volume type of assist setup like this you still got to crank up that ma master volume pretty loud enough to get those speakers to move enough air to really capture the tone of the amp and if you have an amp that doesn't have a master volume you're doubly in trouble because you have no way to control that volume you have to crank the gain as loud as it can get the louder you crank the amp the better it's going to sound right so in a home studio type of a setup that becomes a real challenge for us um, so this is one way to combat that. Um, so that is with, oops, no attenuation at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some chords and let them sustain, let them ring out. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kick in the uh, attenuator. So you're going to hear the volume start to drop a little bit. Um, but let's first walk through the controls. So over here we have the main rocker switch. Right now we're in bypass mode, no attenuation at all, power amp, kit uh, guitar cabinet, nothing being attenuated. Over here, this, this next switch here, which really makes this unit kind of unique, is this is an impedance selector. It allows you to switch between 8 ohms and 16 ohms. So if you have an 8 ohm cabinet, you put it on 8 ohms, which is what I'm using today. If you have a cabinet is 16 ohms, you would flip it to 16 ohms. Most of the other units on the market, like the hot plate, for example, you have to either buy the 8 ohm unit or the 16 ohm unit. It's not selectable impedance. 
um, which so this makes this really nice. So that regardless of the type of cabinet you're using, you can you can flip between eight ohms and sixteen ohms. The next two set of switches are the equalization switches, one called edge and one called warm. And what these are really used for, and they're kind of subtle, is when you crank up an amp and you start to attenuate the output level and you start to bring that volume down, you tend to lose a little bit of the top end and a little bit of the bottom end. And what this edge and warm switch does is it kind of brings those, that, those frequencies back in to the signal. So you don't lose, it doesn't start to sound thin or it doesn't sound too dark. Um, it, it retains that quality as if you didn't have any of the attenuation that you had, you just heard the amp direct. It brings the highs and the lows back in. From there, we have the amount that we're going to attenuate. We have an A, B, C, D, and E, and a studio section, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, on the A setting, it's at its minimum amount of attenuation. On the B setting, it attenuates a little more, C a little more, D a little more, and then finally E, and I'll show you an example of that in a second. And then on the studio mode, this is, and these are step switches between A and E, okay, on the attenuation. On the studio mode, this is not a step switch. This is a continuous uh, dial here that allows you to start at a, at a completely off, no signal at all. And as you start to dial this up, you can start to dial in as much volume as you want. So this is great if you're recording directly out of the Rock Crusher into, let's say, one of your uh, M boxes or your audio interface going into your favorite DAW. You can really dial in how much volume you want going to the, uh, going to the speaker cabinet so you can really record this at you know really really quiet levels and again still uh retain that thick beefy tone that you would get if you had the amp completely wide open driving a 412 cabinet so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look and forget about this section for a second this is a speaker emulation section this eq and stuff is not it's bypassed right now we'll talk about that in part two of this of this review so what we're going to do now is going to play some chords let them ring out when it kick on the the uh the rivera rock crusher here and i'm going to go ahead i'm going to step us through the different volumes so you can hear how it drops down in volume and then when we get to the studio section i'll, I'll show you that as well so you can kind of get a feel for how this works okay so here we are in the lowest setting a the lowest amount of attenuation and we're going to kick it in here so let's take a listen to this So oh, hopefully you were able to hear how it completely steps down the volume. Now, what are the uh, the amount of volume between A and B, C and D? What what are the increments in say decibels? Rivera doesn't put that in their manual here, so I'm not really sure. They just say that they have dialed it down um, enough between each step to be what they call quote unquote ear pleasing. So I'm not sure how much it actually attenuates. I gotta imagine at least six to 10 dB, it sounds like to me. It's pretty drastic of a difference as you can hear in those examples. So that's, uh, and when you get all the way over to the studio again, you can go completely off and you can dial in as much of the volume as you want. So this is really, really handy. You can really do a whole, a whole bunch of different um, volume options here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it on the minimum amount of attenuation. And I'm going to kick in these equalization uh, switches, the edge and the warm. And again, they're subtle. I don't even know over YouTube if you're going to be able to hear the difference. But sitting in the room here, I can hear a subtle difference, how it brings in a little more of the top and a little more of the bottom. But it's not over-exaggerated. So it's nice. Uh, as the volume goes down, you kick in those switches and it kind of brings in a little top and a little bottom and kind of warms it up a little bit. So we'll start with the off position, minimum amount of attenuation, and let's take a listen and I'll kick these on and off so you can hear the difference.
So again, if you were sitting in the room here with me, you would hear that, especially on the edge, you can really hear that top end come in, but it doesn't get harsh, it doesn't get brittle. It's nice and it's very ear pleasing. It works really well. Um, so again, these two equalization switches are nice. I always keep them both on. It just seems to fill up the sound, fill out the sound a little bit more. You don't, you don't, it doesn't get too dark sounding, especially at lower volumes. Um, so that is the power attenuator section. So again, this is right now being mic'd up on a 412 cabinet with an SM57. Um, and you could, what's really nice about this is now you can record your guitar, your favorite guitar cabinet at much lower volumes at bedroom uh, volume levels, bedroom quiet volume levels, late at night, early in the morning. You won't have to worry about disturbing your family, which is great. This is also great if you want to take this into a band practice, I guess. And uh, when you're playing, if you're not miking your amps through a PA in a rehearsal room, you always got to turn up your amps to, to be able to hear them. And a lot of times, you're, you know, people you know, may say, oh, you're too loud, you're too loud, because you got to crank a tube head so loud to get it to sound good. Well, one way to kind of combat that is you can kind of use this and attenuate the volume a little bit, the signal going out. So you can still crank the amp again, and turn down a little bit without sacrificing tone, which is really nice. So that is the power attenuating attenuation section of the Rivera Rock Rusher recording. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna uh, repatch this up and, and hook it up so we can look at the speaker emulation, which is a really cool thing as well, where you don't even need to use a cabinet. You're gonna, we're gonna go direct from the, from the Rock Rusher directly into our interface and still get that speaker cabinet uh, type of a sound. So, uh, Come back in one second and we'll take a look at that. Let's take a look at the Rock Crusher recording using the speaker emulation section of this. So just to kind of explain how this thing is set up again, we're going in from the guitar into a reverb pedal to give a little bit of reverb directly into the head. We haven't changed any of the settings from the last section. Our gain is at about uh, 10 o'clock-ish. Uh, low, medium, and high is all 12 o'clock, high noon with the uh, master volume at just about 11, 11.30, okay? So we haven't changed any of that. So now on this section, um, from this point down, we have an input level meter. As you can see as I strum the guitar, you can see this input signal coming into the, uh, into the Rock Crusher. Um, we have an EQ on and off switch. When you turn it off, it sounds kinda, kinda gnarly, kinda nasty. Nasty, right? You kick in the EQ switch. Okay, then you have a pad, you can pad down the signal, um, and then this is a way uh, switch here to, to, uh, to uh, turn the, 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 the uh, LEDs here on and off. We have our first uh, slider here, which is the input uh, signal into the Rock Crusher, okay? And then from this point down, this is an 11 bands graphic EQ. And what R Rivera has done is, when we talk about speaker emulation or simulation, automatically comes to mind you think about software you think about a plug-in uh, type of a scenario that's not what this is um, what Rivera has done is they took um, speaker cabinets um, and in their in, in their R&D lab and they the, in real world situations where they would mic up with an SM57 uh, slightly off the dust cap uh, as they say in their user manual and they would analyze playing a guitar a tube head through these speaker cabinets what these speakers are doing and how they're reacting and coming up and developing the EQ curves to, to uh, emulate, if you will, that speaker. So in other words, they'll take a cabinet with uh, Celestian cream backs in them and they'll mic up that cabinet with an SM57. They'll analyze the, um, the way the speaker reacts and the frequencies and they will come up with an EQ curve that allows you now to set that EQ curve and when you play direct from the box into your interface, it sounds like those speaker cabinets. So again, we don't have a speaker cabinet hooked up in this scenario. We're going right from the amp to the rock crusher directly into the interface. Now the attenuation section is completely bypassed when you're using this section. So if you turn any of these knobs, they don't work. They're all, you have to either hook it up one way or the other. So in the first section, we looked at the power attenuator. Now we're gonna look at the speaker uh, emulation section. So that's what they've done. And in their user manual, they give you some snapshots, some photos of some popular of their EQ curves. They emulate, um, let's see, the uh, the Celestion G12 T75s with an SM57 on the edge of the dust cap. Okay, so that's the that's the, the speaker cabinet in most of the Marshall, um, the speakers in most of the Marshall cabinets, the GT75. Uh, they've given, given you an EQ curve for the Celestion Creamback speakers, the Celestion G12K100s and the Electro Voice EVM12Ls. So 
what you would do as a starting point is you pick one of these curves, which I've done here, the GT75, and I set up the curve according to their specs um, and went directly into my interface. And this is what their um, example or their EQ curve for a GT75 Marshall cabinet. Okay, so this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, so that's what the GT75 sounds like. So the way you would kind of use this, or one way to use this unit, is let's say you're going to record a guitar, uh, you're recording guitar, rhythm guitars, let's say, for your song, and you're going to record a double track. You're going to record and put a guitar on the, on the hard left and guitar on the hard right across the stereo field. You could set up this EQ curve, like I did here for, let's say, the GT75, record your, your part, go back, re-record um, the track again a second time, right? To paint a hard light, right? But this time we're gonna change the EQ curve to a different type of speaker. So you get two totally different uh, sounding um, speaker cabinets kind of going on there, um, which is great because it really gives that nice full sound. It sounds like there were two different guitar players or two different sets of cabinets uh, playing at the same time, which is great. So what we're gonna do is now that we have the GT75, we can go ahead and let's, uh, Let's use the manual here and let's let's uh, let's set up a cream back the uh, the Celestian cream back again mic'd up with an SM57 on the edge of the of the dust cap. So this is what the EQ curve would look like. So they show you a photo of what it would look like. So um, and before we do that, let's talk about the frequencies here on this 11 band EQ. I failed to do that earlier. Sorry about that. So the way they developed this 11 band EQ is these frequencies were specifically chosen that are based around guitar and guitar speakers. Um, so, for example, usually anything up below around 80 hertz, you're usually going to roll off the low ends in the mix, right? So you won't see any EQ uh, frequency, anything less than 75 hertz. You're usually going to roll off the bottom end. We're also not going to see anything on the real top end. You're not going to see an air band at like 16K. The highest frequency they have here is 4K. So to kind of step you through the different frequencies that Rivera chose here for this equalizer were 75 hertz, 125, 175, 250. 375, 500, 750 hertz, 1.2K, 1.6, 2.5, and 4K. Those are the most, those are the frequencies that you usually, when you're working in the mix and your DAW for guitars to get guitars to sit right in the mix, those are kind of the frequencies that you're going to kind of turn to. You're going to roll off the real low end. You're not going to put anything really above 4K that's going to get too brittle sounding. Um, so these are these were frequencies that were specifically chosen based on the speak guitar speakers that they that they tried to emulate here. So having said that, let's set up the uh, the cream back to give us a different so you can hear the difference between what we just played and what what we're going to play now. So let's take a look here. So I'll do this in real time and just kind of match the shape as close as possible here. This is going to be here. This is going to be a little bit here. We're going to move this all the way down to about here. Here, about 500 hertz is going to be uh, up in this area here. Forgive me for kind of getting in the frame here. I just want to make sure I set this up properly. Uh, 750 is about here. Uh, one uh, point, one point two K. It's going to be down in this area here. This is going to be pulled up a little bit. Uh, the 2.5 is going to be down here. And then the 4K is going to be down in this area. So this is their EQ shape for a Celestian cream back. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like and kind of compare that to what we just played before with the GT uh, 75s. <laughs> So as you can hear there, hopefully, it's a completely to completely two different types of tones, which is really great. Put those in a mix and kind of blend them together, and they're gonna it's gonna get a really nice, unique, really nice big kind of a sound. So it's it, it's the same thing as having two different types of speaker cabinets. One one loaded with GT75s, the other one loaded with Creambacks, and playing the track twice. Now you don't need to use a speaker cabinet, which is great. 
And then what you can also do is you could start off with one of the one of the suggested EQ curves and you could say, you know, I like this the way this sounds, but I really want, let's say, a little more bottom end. So you can go ahead and just, you know, bump up your 75, you know, 75 uh, hertz. So let's take a listen. So you want to bump up a little 75 hertz, you bump up it to 75. You want to, uh, you know, pull down a little bit of uh, 2.5 and bring up a little 4K, simple. You just... So again, you can just start off with one of their, one of their suggested... Um, EQ curves and you can just you know start pulling playing around with the sliders you need a little bit more sizzle bring up a little 4k you need a little bit more bottom end bring up 75 Hertz or 125 or 175 it's a great way for you to dial in your own unique sound um, that maybe isn't even something they've even come up with uh, in the user manual which is really kind of cool so that is the Rivera Rock Crusher recording. Again, it's two units in one. It's a power attenuator as well as a speaker emulator. It's great if you're recording in a small space where you have to worry about noise levels. You can, you can record a high gain tube amp at what would normally be ear splitting volumes at a very low volume and still retain all that tonal quality as if you were really cranked up loud to get that great uh, guitar uh, tube amp type of a tone. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions about anything in this video, you can leave a comment below or send me an email to visionrecordingstudios at yahoo.com. And again, if you want to check out any of my other services or any other content or learn more about Vision Recording Studios, go to visionrecordingstudios.com. There's a ton of content on there um, and all my services and all my vi other videos, so on and so forth. Again, thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing these videos with others. I know they're helping a lot of people. I get tons of emails every day. And if you do send me an email, I will get back to you. You can rest assured of that. Uh, so again, until next time, thanks again for joining me at visionrecordingstudios.com. And I hope... This uh, product review uh, was helpful to you. Uh, the Rivera Rock Crusher recording, again, it's a little bit pricey. As I said earlier on in the video, it's not for everybody. It is a pricey uh, unit. It is an investment. Um, but if you're looking for a way to record high gain tube amps at a low volume level, this is one way to do it. And you're kind of getting two units in one. So it is a great product. I do recommend it. Um, but again, do you need it? You don't need anything, um, but I'm just showing you gear that I use personally in my own home studio. This is not something that Rivera sent me. Um, the product demos you see here is stuff that I personally use and that I highly recommend. Um, so again, if you have any questions, send me an email. And until next time, this is David, visionrecordingstudios.com. Take care.